we're into what's called the Learning Outcome 4, which is, as it says, they're exploring the communications uh, approach used for preparation and presentation of your research project outcomes. So this is like the finale of all the work that's gone on, the initial proposal, where you have to come up with some ideas of what you're going to, to research, and you come up with your research questions, and then you did your literature review, some uh, did some data uh, gathering, um, in, information um, interviews, and so on, that kind of thing. And then some analysis, hopefully, of the interviews and analysis of the data you've got from the literature review. And then you kind of justify your findings. This is the last bit, really, where you're kind of pulling everything together in uh, some kind of communication method, which is in a, a way is up to you what you want to do. And I'm going to give you uh, a strong hint on what I would suggest you do. But basically, it's up to you how you want to communicate your, your findings. So there's two aspects to the past criteria particularly that you need to engage with. And the first one relates to communicate research outcomes in an appropriate manner to an intended audience. So this, of course, will be slightly different for all of you. Um, I'd imagine um, it depends on what your audience is going to be and what the best way is to actually uh, communicate your research project and its findings to them. So that's the first thing that uh, we need to do. And that would be an essay. Uh, uh, so that, that's the uh, that's the past grade that I should say that is. Um, so you've got to decide what you're going to do. So you've got to do an essay on communication methods, and then you've got to actually do the uh, the, the way you're going to communicate it with a presentation or a, a report or whatever. And then the higher grades relate to things like evaluate the communication approach, um, see how it meets the research project outcomes and objectives. So that'd be a, sort of an essay to build on what you've actually done. The distinction grade in this case will be critically reflect on how the audience for whom the research was conducted influenced the communication approach that you used. Um, and, and that's quite an interesting one because I know in the past with students uh, that the, the audience they're, they're dealing with can, can have an impact on how they're going to present uh, and word the, the final report. So we're given uh, six weeks for this because it takes you right to the end of the academic year here. This is uh, the final outcome. So what I'm going to do is outline very briefly what needs to be in the uh, communication essay. Just outline it uh, as an overview. And then I'm going to suggest what communication method you might want to consider, which students last year did, and I, and I thought worked quite well for them. But you don't have to use this method. I'm just going to suggest it to you. Okay. So this is an overview of everything we've done so far, all the outcomes here. You started off with your learning outcome one, which was the project proposal that you had to develop. And then we went into literature review, learning outcome two. Everybody really enjoyed the literature review, don't we? And it was the research method essay. And then learning outcome three was the reflections essay. So into the final outcome, this is learning outcome four as it's defined. There are two parts to it. There's the communications essay. I'm just going to outline in a moment. And then there's the... I'm going to call it an executive summary. That's what I'm going to suggest you do for your presentation methods. But I said, please feel free to ignore me if you want to. But I'm going to outline that for you later on. I think that's a nice way to end the uh, the research project. That's the actual criteria from the syllabus there showing you learn outcome four. So P6 and P7 has got to do. And if you want to do the higher grades, and of course, we've got the merit and distinction grades. My main emphasis at the moment is that everybody gets through the past grades because time is not on our side here. Um, so I want you to, to focus on the past grades, get them out of the way. And then if there's more time available, then by all means, go back and, and look at the uh, higher grades. In your background folder, it outlines the deliverables for learn outcome four. As I said, for the past grade, there are essentially uh, two aspects to it. There's the communications essay, and for word count, that's around about I would suggest 1,200 to 1,500 words. So um, I let you decide exactly what you, what you want to do there, but that that would be my suggestion. Previous students have been managed to to encapsulate all the need in that kind of uh, word count range there. And within this essay, you've got to explore the different types of communications approaches that you can use to present the research outcomes, your findings, in other words, from your study. And then the second part that we need to engage with is the actual presentation, which I'm going to suggest is, is really an executive summary to, to undertake. And again, I would stick to a very targeted word count here. I would, I would say 1,500, 2,000 words, absolute maximum. I really, really encourage you not to go over that because executive summaries which is what I'm focusing on here, are very concise. And that's the whole essence of it. And I thought it would be a nice end to your sort of development in a way to actually try and produce something that 
where you're not sort of perhaps stretching for a word count. You know, sometimes I get that people say, well, what's the word count? I work up to my word count. I would say with this this case, you know, you probably would want to do more than uh, that I'm stating there. If you really sort of sat down and just, just free write or wrote the, the, um, the summary, you probably want to do more than that because it's quite tight, 1,500 to 2,000 words. But I would encourage you to really go for it because an executive summary is a very small part um, of the process, but it's a very important part of the research process because it encapsulates everything in a very, very concise way. And that's quite an art to write in a concise manner is not always easy. So um, that, that's what I would encourage you to do. But if you want to do a, a, a PowerPoint presentation, if you want to do a full blown report, then you feel free to do that. There's no limit on what you're going to do. Obviously, a, a report would probably bigger than word counts. Um, but you can, we're welcome to do that. So if you want to do the uh, the merit grades, then you have to do a further essay, uh, which evaluates how the communication approach met the research project outcomes and objectives. And again, I'm going to work out there in the region of 800 to 1,000 uh, um, words. And then if you want to go for distinction grade, well, another essay required for that one. Um, that's where you're critically reflecting on how your audience for whom the research was conducted influenced the communications approach used for the preparation and presentation of the research project outcomes. I'll talk more about them in another, in another time for those people who want to engage with that. I'm going to concentrate at the moment on the PASS criteria here, this communications essay and the presentation. So for the communications essay, I'm going to keep this very straightforward. Now, you've, you've got quite a bit of experience of of researching now and researching sort of um, research methods that you, you did a, a while ago and researching uh, models for reflection. You're very, very adept at researching and, and from the work I've seen so far. So you're not really going to have any great issues with the communications method essay. Uh, it's just a question of researching, first of all, various types of communication method, discussing them, looking at the pros and cons as you consider the research methods, uh, you look at the pros and cons of them, um, do the same with communication methods and also try and put them in a context of, of how or they how they might apply to your particular uh, research study or, or maybe they, they're not appropriate to your research study and your intended audience. Do you have one sort of eye on the intended audience here of who's going to likely uh, receive your your information? Um, you know, if it's obviously going, if it's going to like the general uh, workshop environment, for example, I did a survey once where I had to go to management and it had to go to uh, that's a shop floor because they're always involved with it. And then you have to make sure you write it appropriately for the various audiences it's going to see. If it's going to go to the manning directors or whatever, then again, you may want to you know, think of that audience a slightly different way. I know uh, somebody last year was doing some research um, and their audience was senior management at the company and that really did focus their attention on trying to ensure that they were very concise uh, in the way they, they were writing and, and also what they were writing, make sure they were very diplomatic because some of the findings weren't too favourable towards the management. So be diplomatic in the way you write these um, these almost like criticisms because obviously you know the, the, the people that are being criticised are the people that be to read the report. So so there's a lot in this kind of approach of, of thinking of the audience and thinking of the best method to enable you to communicate your findings to that particular audience. What I've done on the slide here though is just outline what I would suggest is a structure and I'm going to leave it like that with you. Um, obviously I have an introduction to our communications essay and then I would suggest you probably will consider various forms of the communication methods uh, available and I've just put uh, you know a list down here that's off the top of my head really. You might want to you depends on the, um, the what your study you've done. Uh, an article for a peer-reviewed journal, you know, that would be quite you know, interesting exercise to try and do. But it's, it's something that could be done with some of the research that you've got. It could be something going into a journal, a technical journal maybe, um, because of the findings you've got very interesting to a specific type of people. So you might want to produce a formal report of what you've done. That's absolutely fine if you do. Full-blown report. Um, I'm not sure you want to do a dissertation or a thesis, but again, they are methods of communication in sort of very academic orientated environments. You have the executive summary, which I'm going to outline for you in a minute. 
do a PowerPoint presentation. It's your traditional presentation method. Probably when we think of presentations, you probably automatically think of presenting with a PowerPoint presentation. Well, we, um, there are obviously things like flip charts or presentation methods, uh, Microsoft Teams and the Zoom. It's a way of doing presentations these days. So that's just some suggestions of some of the methods you might want to think about in this communication essay to go and research, look at the good and bad points, maybe see how they apply in the context of your research, you know, whether they have application or not. And those are the kind of things that you can consider there for the uh, section two of the communications essay. Section three, as I've labeled it here, this is where you'll decide on your communications method and your your justify your choice basically of, of the listing above or whatever your listing is going to be you would then state why you've chosen to do this particular method don't say just because i suggested that but you know, hopefully you'll see some relevance in and if you're going to use, uh, use an executive summary you'll see some relevance in applying that in your in your particular research study so you need to use sort of justify why you've, you've chosen your particular method here and if you want to go for the higher grades, then you could build in this uh, communications essay, you could build in the, uh, the next um, section, which is how the choice of the communication method met the project outcomes and objectives. And then then um, have another section, like section five, I call it here, they can consider the influence of the audience on the choice of your method. So it's kind of building on section three in a way. Uh, but don't forget, as always, reference to use must be formally stated in the document, okay? So that would be my suggestion for a communications essay. Again, you can do your own thing if you want to. If that doesn't work for you, then you, you feel free to, to do what you want to do. But that would be my suggestion um, to try and structure your communications essay, which everybody has to do. I'm going to talk to you about this executive summary because I do think it's a nice way to, to finish off the research project. And the other thing about it is because you, you've got to write very concisely, you haven't got to write really too much. The, the art here is trying to, in a very small number of words, encapsulate your entire project process and make sure you emphasize the salient parts of the research process and to the audience in this executive summary. So it's quite an art at writing executive summaries, but something, a skill that would be nice to develop. Up. We're just going to outline an executive summary here, okay? So an executive summary is a thorough overview, and that's key there, it's obviously a thorough overview of your research report or whatever uh, document uh, that we're considering here. And the aims is to synthesize key points for the reader, for your audience, saving time and preparing the reader to understand the study's overall content. It's a separate and standalone document of sufficient detail which can be sufficiently clear, concise and coherent to ensure that the reader can completely understand the contents of the main research project. And that's where the art is really, is extracting the, the main elements of your study in a very concise way and presenting them to the audience so they get the big picture from something that is quite a small document here. Again, they range in size Typically, they range from one to ten pages. Ten pages, what I would suggest, would be sort of the maximum. But it does depend on the length of the report or the length of the study that you're considering. So it can be a summary. In certain instances, it can be a summary of more than one document, but I don't think that's going to affect you. But sometimes you get lots of papers submitted to conferences and so on. They, they do a, a, an executive summary of a, a variety of papers, and that's a slightly different consideration of what you're doing. So think of the executive summary as essentially a sort of mini paper of your larger paper, your larger report or your study, whatever you've undertaken, with an emphasis on the recommendations that's emerged from the original study. And that's quite kind of key to the executive summary. We want those recommendations, uh, justified recommendations from your research, uh, clearly prominent in this executive summary. But we also need a little bit of background as to how we came to those uh, those findings. So this is a key aspects I mentioned before is choosing the salient aspects from the original document, the original study that are most important for the intended audience, whoever you're presenting it to, this is the bits and pieces that they will need to, to understand what you've done and what it means to them uh, in the context of their, of their environment. So these parts must be included in the executive summary, okay, and, and should then provide a thorough and complete explanation of what's to be conveyed. Typically, it says that executive summary is no longer than 10% of the original document or original report you've undertaken and drafted. So, so it's, it's a small element of it, really. This is what's considered to be the typical content of an executive summary. So the formats will vary, but they typically include something like this, an opening statement 
a brief background information, the purpose of the research study, the methods of data gathering and analysis. I'm not sure we've done too much analysis, but certainly uh, data gathering. Some of you have done with your uh, literature reviews, obviously, and then with your uh, interviews and so on. We should then analyze that data considered. So there'd be a way of analyzing the data we'd outline. And then we overview the findings from the research. And then we give a description of each recommendation from our uh, research accompanied by justification don't forget of course at this level of study we have to justify um, all the all the findings or the conclusions we want to put forward but of course you'll have that justification because of your research process you've gone through this is what's nice at the end of the research i think it's a nice part because up to now you, you have to quote eminent people or you know, peer-reviewed journals to give your justification what you're saying but now you have a little bit of license now for you to say something to the world about your particular study from your findings your little bit of research you've done here you can now sort of project that out to the world and say hey you know in this particular context this particular study this was found and it may not be something that's been replicated in other studies it might be new it might confirm what's been done in other studies but it might be something totally new to other studies so it's your little bit here that um you know a little 15 minutes of fame if you want to call it that to where you're going to uh, put forward to find of your study and you're justifying that predominantly by your research now the research process you've undertaken and the information you've gathered and analyzed uh, you're giving justification to to your findings from that so it's a nice aspect of the of the research i think when you get to this stage just as just general points here if necessary use bullet points for emphasis for con clarity and conciseness of the presentation um, I encourage you to do that if you want to sort of get over some certain points then and bullet them. If you've got lots of them, number bullet them to make it easier to, to reference. But bullet points are um, a good idea to use uh, to, to help highlight certain aspects um, of the summary. And we would mention their executive summary, generally speaking, no more than 10% of the original document. So an executive summary should be short enough to be read by the intended audience but long enough to ensure that it is a standalone synopsis and encapsulates the uh, full study you've undertaken. And that's where, to me, the art is. It's, it's quite an art in developing these, these documents. This is what I would propose. If you're going to undertake an executive summary, this was my suggested structure based on what students have done in the past and what, what we're trying to include in this document. And again, I, I would say 1,500 to 2,000 words is, is, is certainly no more than 2,000 words. Um, probably less is more in an executive summary. That, that sort of expression people use sometimes. I think it's true here. The less number of words you use, probably the better in an executive summary. If you're, it makes you nice and concise and coherent. So this would be my suggested outline. So we start off with an introduction. It's tailored towards the targeted audience. And, and I should sort of bear in mind that executive summaries can be different. If you're doing this for real, as uh, said, you may have a study that's done across a workforce where you've got workshop floor workers and senior management, middle management, whatever. Um, and in some cases, you can produce executive summaries that, that are uh, from the same study, but they're actually uh, for different audiences. So the one perhaps for the shop floor might have slightly different terminology, might focus on, on their priorities, whereas the the ones for the senior management, you know, might, might be worded slightly differently and again, focus on their priorities. So you can actually have the same study, but different executive summaries can be uh, taken from there. So the introduction then outlined to the audience. Whether you need a table of contents in such a small document, I leave that to you. I would suggest probably not really in this executive summary, but I know some students do like to sort of have that. Uh, so I think uh, I think table of contents is sort of optional. I'll leave that to you. And then outline the company and or the researcher's role in the study. Okay, so if you, if you did it at a company, uh, then, then you would outline the background to the company, your role within the company, your role within the research, that kind of thing could be put in there and in, in section three, say. Then explain your need, your problem, and the importance of the context of the study in your particular case. You know, maybe it's something that's happening now out there with sustainability issues and so on. You've got to use a lot of drive to, I don't know, to reduce the use of fossil fuels, whatever it might be. So the study's got that kind of importance. We've got to, a hot topic at the moment to, to study. So, so explain the, the need and the importance of your particular study. State the study's aims and objectives. This is usually where the research questions will be stated. And identify any strengths and weaknesses of the research. Because it might be that your particular research questions are focused on a particular area. So you're only encompassing that area. With my research, as you know, my research has always been on sort of 
technician engineering students. So when I look at assessment practice, I look at it, it through that, that prism of engineering technicians. So how useful is that for people that are working in health and social care or working in sport or whatever? Uh, so that would be a limitation of the study that it's primarily looking at engineering students. There may well be some transferable characteristics between assessment of engineering students, assessment of people in health and social care or in sport or whatever. But the study itself does not focus on that. So it's kind of a weakness uh, of the study. So, so if you have sort of those kind of limitations, you can highlight them there for the reader. Then outline very briefly your methodology, your method. You've been through that in your they're in outcome two, uh, looking at methods and methodology. So briefly outline the approach you've used, qualitative, quantitative, the, the methods you've used, interviewing, questionnaires, whatever they might be, experimental methods, they would be outlined there. And then I recommend solutions and explain the value of these solutions to the audience, the stakeholders going to be um, reading this document or viewing this document. Clearly justify the solutions by explaining how the original research questions are answered in relation to the organisation or the context. And then finally, state a definitive conclusion that highlights the significance of the research to the intended audience. You know, what should they, if it's a senior management, what should they be doing now to, say, improve the morale of the workforce or to prepare for the fourth industrial revolution or to stop our product failing in the field? You know, that's the final, that's the final conclusion that you'll draw. So that would be my suggestion for a, a proposed structure for the executive summary, if that's what you want to do. Something around those lines. Again, feel free to tweak it and to modify it and to add or subtract from it as you feel you need to. But I think that would encapsulate most of the content of the executive summary. Just mention this is sort of finishing the executive summary. After completion of your first draft and executive summary, I would allow a break before rereading it. And I do think that's a good thing because you're so engrossed with the you know developing your, your, your document, your executive summary, you, you kind of sometimes can't see the wood for the trees. So it helps have a break from it. it helps when you review it again, perhaps with more of an unbiased and fresh perspective. So uh, there is something in that. Um, sort of right, drafting something and then leaving it for a while and then, then going back and, and checking it again kind of thing. Just check sure, to make sure that the summary will make sense as a separate standalone document from the full research. So again, this is after you had a break from drafting it, you can kind of hopefully go back and see if you've missed certain aspects. It doesn't perhaps, uh, you know, it's not hanging together perhaps as it should do. You can always then enhance it slightly if you need to. And always proofread it, especially these final summaries, because, you know, if your, your second summary is full of mistakes and typos and that, it doesn't bode well for the full report. It doesn't really reflect well on your full report, which might be brilliant but an executive summary wouldn't do it any favours if it was just not well proofread and if you can get someone else to proofread it as well these are all common sense things I suppose but uh, sometimes a fresh pair of eyes you know sometimes we just you know, we sort of proofread our own work and we glaze sometimes over we say well we think what, what's what it says and so we glaze over it where we don't pick up the, the, the issue but um, somebody with a, a totally different perspective might pick, pick up any problems we've got there. And again, the last point is about the fact you can have variations in executive summaries uh, for different audiences. So just something to bear in mind. OK, so that's like an outline of the executive summary. And I'm using this just because I know a bit about it. It's actually a, a thesis I had to put together a few years ago for, for, for my studies. My thesis was about uh, called assessment in action. And it was a study of lecturers and students constructions of BTEC nationals. It was called then assessment practice in a college engineering program area. That was the title of the study. So um, I put together my thesis, about seven years to do. This was a table of contents of the thesis here. Okay, so my table of contents. So it starts off obviously with an introduction. We've got there, and then just about 14 pages or so. We've got my literature review, as you've got a literature review, about 20, uh, 30 pages, my literature review. Then I had a little section on evolution of assessment practice within the BTEC arena. Uh, so historical background to how BTEC came about and how assessment practice evolved. That's about uh, nearly uh, 20 pages or so. My methodology and methods, uh, that's about pushing 30 pages. And I have my set in my scene for the data presentation. That was talking about the college that I was undertaking the study at. 13 pages there. Um, how lecturers construct their assessment practice. This was uh, from interviews I'd undertaken, looking at the 
and the way lecturers develop the assessments, like assessments I'm trying to develop for you for next week. You know, how do they go about doing that when they've got very little information to go on for BTEC? You know, how do they evolve their assessment practice? So that was uh, from the uh, lecturer's perspective, it's about 20, 25 ish pages there. Section seven, students' engagement with assessment practice. How do the students engage with what we're doing there? So another so 15 pages or so there for that section. Section eight was my findings, about 15 pages again, probably there. And then my conclusions, 20 pages or so, and then my references. All right, all in all, it's 184 pages long. It was 69,100 words for the overall thesis, okay? But I had to produce an executive summary for this. So that's quite a challenge. This was the actual executive summary that was produced of the thesis. Now we're down to 3,150 words and we're down to 10 pages. Quite interesting. It says, it says in the spiel before that sort of 1 to 10 pages maximum. It actually is 10 pages is this particular one. And it works out, normally speaking, I've got 5% of the thesis in terms of word count and 5% of the thesis in terms of pages. Normally speaking, that is. So you can see it's a very, very concise document of that previous study and this is what I kind of ended up with I've got what the thesis is about so sort of introduction I've put in my research questions I put in the college context that I was undertaking the study at looked at the what BTEC nationals actually are because some people might not know what they are then outline my research design my methodology and my methods notice there's like almost a page for each of these uh, if that and then what was found and I've got my sort of findings the salient influences on assessment the nature and form of assessment preparedness for progression from the BTEC national and I've got my conclusions of the study considerations and recommendations for BTEC and for the program area and all of that is in 10 pages so quite a, an exercise to take over 60,000 words and get it down to into 3,000 but it can be done, okay? It takes time, but it can be done. But it, it, you know, this is the kind of thing that you have to do now. You have to go from a, a quite a large study you've undertaken to now and produce this kind of executive summary and try and get your full outline of what you've done, how you did it, uh, what the findings were, what the conclusions are going to be, what the recommendations are, all of that within no more than 10 pages. Okay. I've got permission to use these. I thought you might like to see these. These are from previous students. I've got two here. And this is their executive summary structures. I, ha I will put the executive summaries up on team so you can actually see the full executive summaries. But I just thought I'd show you the structures of their executive summaries and the overview here. So the research title is George um, Skidmore um, undertook the uh, smart farming study. So how can smart farming technology be applied to the Isle of Man agricultural crop production to create and sustain a competitive advantage in the marketplace. George kindly let us review his proposal back in Learn Outcome 1, which we reviewed previously. And this is kind of his, his final deliverable, if you like, for his study. So his executive summary. Just giving you a table of contents. You can see, again, there's a bit of structure here. It starts with an overview, talking about the Isle of Man and the Isle of Man context. There's about a problem, about the the need for producing more increased crop yields and so on. He has, in his case, a definition section. I think that was a very useful section because he had lots and lots of technical terminology that I certainly never heard of before. And I thought that was quite a nice idea to put that into the, the summary, his idea to do that. Um, because then you've got a little reference source there where as he goes through some of the you know, terminology, you can quickly um, um, you know, see what the definition is. So I thought that was quite a nice little touch to add definitions. I'm not saying you need it, um, but in, in his case, it worked quite nicely. Then he's got a research questions and research objectives. And what he did with his study, uh, with his executive summary, he took each of his research questions and he outlined the research question and he then discussed it, how he went about uh, researching the question, what he found, and he kind of draws sort of mini little conclusions against each of the research questions. So again, that was the way he chose to structure his executive summary around specifically the research question. So he's got a section four there. He's broken down into his three research questions. From that, he then defines his recommendations based on this study in the context of the research he's undertaken. And of course, he's adds his list of references at the end. His word count there was normally 1500 for that. Nice little structure, nice interesting read. There's George's structure, and I've got one more here. Uh, this was Savannah's this executive summary, so overview here. Um, Savannah's title was, Does Leadership Style Have an Impact on Employee Satisfaction from a Shop for Management Perspective Within the Engineering Company She Was um, Researching? And this is her 
break down. She starts again with the introduction. She has put a table of contents in this uh, this study, so that's fine if she wants to put that in. Um, she outlines the company and the researcher's role within the company, her role, if you like, the aims and objectives, uh, of the, uh, sorry, aims and research questions. Then she's got her methodology and methods. The sample, she's talking about their people that were participants in the study. That would be the shop floor workers and middle management. Then she outlines questionnaires. She used three uh, different questionnaires. Uh, one was for the supervisors, uh, looking at their personality traits. They had uh, um, one for the shop floor employees questionnaire. And then this leadership questionnaire, looking at the characteristics of uh, leadership. So three different questionnaires she used in her study. And she outlines them in her uh, executive summary. Because at the end of the day, that's very pertinent to her because she's basing her finds on the outcomes of the questionnaire. So if you go back to her methods section, she had quite an extensive overview of these uh, questionnaires she'd used. Then she had the finding section, talks about employee satisfaction, uh, transformable versus transactional leadership. Again, that was something that came out of her literature review that she discussed these two types of leadership role uh, and then which ones were predominant at the uh, company she was studying. And then she has an employee satisfaction versus leadership style section as well. Again, this goes back to some of the findings she uh, she had from her, um, from her literature review. And then she got recommendations. This is for management. This was going to senior management at the company. So uh, her executive summary was aimed at the senior management in this case. And then she has a conclusion to highlight the significance of the research to all the audiences. So mainly senior management. But I know that some of the shop floor workers were interested in, in the findings, what she told me. And of course, she made her list of references. Her word count was 2,560 words. Okay. So I don't know if that helps you a little bit. Um, if you're not going to do an executive summary, it doesn't. <laughs> you have to find your own way of doing things uh, to some extent. But I will, I will engage with you. If you want to do something totally different, that's absolutely fine. We just we just engage with that. You can go back to a normal presentation if you want to, a PowerPoint presentation that we want to do. But as I said, I do think the executive summary is a nice way to finish off. It's a concise way to finish off. And finally, for your reference, Savannah has kindly agreed that her full executive summary can be shown in this video for students reference. So the following slide outlines the entire document which you can read at your own pace. Is a reference source that helped to generate this presentation and also acknowledgements to the students who kindly participated in this presentation.